All right, you guys, we're back at it with another episode of Ben Travels. Today we are at the Missouri Botanical Gardens, checking out Origami the Garden, which is all of these origami st statues throughout the entire park. We're gonna enter here through uh, the brand new visitor center that they're constructing right now. You see the cranes and everything in the background there. We're gonna head up these steps and head out into the park. Here you can kind of see what the visitor center is gonna look like once it's finished. As you enter into the visitor center, you've got this giant gift shop over here with all sorts of different merchandising art articles. It's actually really cool, very spacious to the garden. So outside of the visitor center, when you first come in, we have the first two sculptures. But inside here we have crane unfolding, which is the process of a paper crane being folded and unfolded as you go up the sculpture. From this angle, you can see some more of that construction for the visitor center. You've got the cranes there in the background. You can kind of see through that scrim there, the giant foundations being poured. So originally you would enter over in that area, that's where the original uh, visitor center was. You would come in and walk down a couple of uh, staircases and uh, you would have this building directly to your left. And this building was full of uh, plants at one time, but now it's just used as a little cut through to make, make it from the new visitor center into the actual gardens. Now we're entering into the rose garden where the next statue is. You can see it right there in the middle there. All throughout this rose garden, we have little tiny bumblebees flying around. It's hard at work making sure that these flowers are properly pollinated. All right, headed off to the next uh, sculpture, which is sculpture number five, Masterpiece. Something to point out uh, while we're walking around to the next statue is that there are over 15, or about, yeah, there's 18 uh, different sculptures to be on the lookout when you're walking around the park or the garden, actually. So another cool thing about the Botanical Gardens is that they do have this trim that goes around the entire uh, property, taking you to and from different gardens. So if you didn't want to walk the entire uh, entire trails and everything, you could hop on this tram and they take you there. Making our way from the masterpiece over there, we come around here to sculpture number six, which is called Sway With Me. As you can see, it's a Pegasus. So this statue here is actually number eight. Five and six, I'm sorry, six and seven are actually inside the Climatron here. So we're gonna go back around, enter that, and then uh, check out those two sculptures. So entering into the Climatron, we're gonna go find statues six and seven. If you aren't familiar with what a Climatron is, it's basically a giant greenhouse that captures all the humidity so that you can have all sorts of different types of tropical plants. And back over here we have session number seven. So for some reason they're kind of in reverse order. So sixes are going to be on the other side over here. So we're going to make our way over there and check that out.
This plant here is called a traveler's tree. We're gonna zoom out just a little bit. But I don't think this plant's big enough. I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's big enough. I think it needs to be a little bit bigger. Statue number six over here. Kind of hanging out above the, the uh, walkway down there. It's called Sway With Me. As you can tell, they're kind of uh, supposed to be on like a swing or a perch. So these flowers right here are probably one of my favorite flowers. I don't even know if they're flowers, but they look like something out of a Dr. Seuss book or a Dr. Seuss movie. Like all of a sudden you're just gonna hear voices coming from them and you're gonna have to take them on some sort of magical adventure. So coming down off that bridge and making our way over this way, we have a path closed, but if you look up, we have that other side of uh, statue number six. And just kind of hanging out up there amongst the trees and all the leaves and looking pretty. Over here, back here, uh, behind all of this, uh, over uh, there, there's a fish pond like a giant tank that they usually have, I believe sunfish in, uh, I'm not quite sure. But usually that's full and you can go back there and check out the fish and everything. But because the statue's up there, they have the path closed. So that if it falls, should it fall, hopefully it doesn't, nobody gets hurt. There truly are some giant plants up here. I don't know if this is a banana tree or what, but Oh my God, it's massive. And I'm not doing any forced perspective or anything either. This is me standing straight up right underneath it and it's a good 20 feet above my head. All right, we're gonna head out, find the rest of the statues. So as we make our way out of the Climatron, they have this neat little display set up with all sorts of little origami creatures. Some butterflies. Oh, I guess this one. This is actually one of the stops. Folded forest. I didn't realize that. But usually, this is a a big play area for kids. As you come out of the out of the climatron, but they do have that kind of packed away right now because of COVID and everything like that. Then you walk out these doors and you go to the right, and it's the big children's garden, outdoor play area. Now it is closed right now, but this sign over here says that it reopens in June. It's the first of June as of today, as of the making of this video. So hopefully sometime this week or within the coming weeks, this place is open. So as you can see, there's a, a couple different things that you can do over here. There is a tree house, a couple different slides, a play village, a splash pad, pollination garden. And over here, you can't really see it, but there is a rope bridge that you can go down or back up if you want, I guess. And another waterfall. I have a thing for waterfalls, I guess. They're pretty. I don't know. And here's a little map of that overall view of uh, the whole play area. Turning around, leaving the, the uh, children's garden. Over here you can see statue numbers, I guess nine? Because eight was up over by the Climatron entrance. So I guess this is nine. I think it's a giant butterfly. This out here, that was statue number eight. And then inside was six and seven. And then you make your way down this path over here and we have statue number nine. All right, so now we have two options. We can either go that way or we can go up around that way. I think number 10 is gonna be up around that way. So we're gonna go up there. So for most of the sculptures, they have these little uh, signs, numbers, numbered signs as you make your way through. For some reason, this one's all the way over here. Even though the statue's right there.
this area here is usually a fountain. That's usually spitting out water. Where the ground is, I guess. But I'm not sure. Off to number 11, which is back down this way. Here we are. I don't know if it's a stork or a crane. It's a very elaborate crane for origami if it is. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and try and find that uh, information placard. All right, here we go. Flying folds. And it doesn't say what kind of bird it is, but that is very pretty, very intricate. Very cool. And as you notice, these aren't actually made out of metal or paper. They're made out of metal, either steel or aluminum or something like that. Uh, but they do have to be able to withstand rain and different types of weather conditions. And we're going to head back over towards that Chinese garden and just kind of take a little shortcut as we make our way to statue number 12, which is up by the Japanese garden, I believe. Not entirely sure. This is actually called the Nanjing Friendship Garden. A nice little gazebo there, overlooking this pond and some of the flowers and everything like that. So I was wrong. Statue number 12 is nowhere near the Japanese garden. Uh, this is the Boxwood Garden. And then there's a makeover going on over here. This used to be like a arid climate garden desert climate statues number 12 are these giant buffalo or bison number 13 is going to be right over here as you can see there's kind of that little outcropping for the the lake and everything so we're going to try walking over here see if we can find statue number 13. i also just want to point out that uh it looks really far from stop to stop and everything, uh, but we're just literally right over there. And now we're going to come across this bridge here, and session number 13 is going to be directly out to the right, kind of sitting in the water. So let's see. Yep, there they are. Some origami boats just kind of hanging out in that lake there. Obviously, they're not made out of paper again. They're made out of aluminum, I believe, so that they can withstand all the different uh, weather conditions and everything like that. So there it is, Paper Navigators, statue number 13. Now we're gonna go to 14A and B, and 15 and 16. This actually hasn't been too bad if you're knowing exactly what you're doing and where you're going and looking for. Uh, I've been here probably about an hour and a half, but I've also been just kind of taking my time and looking around, but if you're doing the origami scavenger hunt, it's relatively quick if you're just looking for the sculptures. Uh, again, nothing is too spread out here in the in the botanical garden, so everything's uh, relatively close and just kind of like a quick little walk from spot to spot. However, with that being said, I think I'm where I'm supposed to be. But, I don't know, where'd it go? I'm lost. And I don't know if they're off these side paths here. Maybe if I keep walking back, we'll find them. So you know what? See those two little crosses there? The, the paths that go directly across from between 13 and 14. That's where I got turned around. So these are up just a little bit farther. I'm gonna go up to 14A and 14B and check those out. So back on the main path, we're gonna walk up this way. And it should just be right on the right on the outside of the walkway. And I could have stayed on that path that I was on over there, because it does circle back around. But I just wanted to do a more direct, straight to it approach. And here we are. I found it. 14A and 14B. So 
but even with getting lost a little bit, turned around a little bit, you know what they say. A blind squirrel can find him not every once in a while. Through over here, we actually can see the Shaw House. Uh, which is usually open for tours. You can walk around to see how uh, Shaw actually lives. And kind of like a setback in time. And then behind over here. Well, actually, I don't know. Is that the Shaw House or is this the Shaw House back here? The big brick building. I don't remember. It's been literally years since I've been here because of COVID and everything. You obviously couldn't go out and do stuff, so I haven't been here in probably two years. And I see some more sculptures over there. There they are. That's probably 15, I think. I'm not sure. Oh, there's more. Oh my gosh. So let's go see if this is the Shaw House. I think this is the Shaw House. But there's also a big brick building back there. That, I'm, that I think it might be like a office building. I'm not entirely sure. Here we have those sculptures up close and personal. Doing a little balancing act. Oh, that's what it's called, balancing act. 15. We're still on the quest to find out if this is a Shaw House or if it's the other one. I'm pretty sure this is a Shaw House. I'm just second guessing myself. So this was his country estate. Spent most of his later years here. I don't let you read all of that. I don't want to bore you. Interesting. So usually this is open. You can walk around, go inside, uh, see all the bedrooms and living rooms and kitchen, uh, just like how it was when Henry Shaw lived in here. And there you have a pretty cool tower thing. And I don't think we're on the tour able to go up into the tower, but I wonder what's up there. I don't know if it's a clock tower or whatnot, but I always wondered what's up there in that tower. More of a full view of that house. As you can see, it's pretty large. And it is very nice on the inside too but they still have that closed. So maybe next time I'll be able to show you around. And something I wanted to point out also is these cameras over here, these giant boxes are projections, projectors for little uh, light shows that they'll do for some of their events here in the gardens. So they'll do 3D mapping or whatever it's called and project images onto the house. It's really cool. But now headed over to number 16. I think it's just directly over here. And here's Shaw's mausoleum. I don't know if it's in the mausoleum. That'd be really weird. But you never know. You never know. So we're going to check it out. I'm walking around to the front over here. And here we have a sleeping dead guy. Nope. No sculptures in there. Born in Sheffield, England. It's Henry Shaw. I don't know if that's his actual resting place, but it is a really nice dedication to uh, the man who had, was Henry Shaw. Who did a lot of things for St. Louis. Many of which I'm not sure of, so I have to do my research on Henry Shaw and just kind of figure out some of the things that he did aside from setting up the botanical gardens. But I think over here is going to be where that next statue is. Nope. So once again, I got turned around and can't read a map. Uh, the horses back there in the middle were actually number 16. I just didn't see a placard for it. And then 15 was the balancing act. So we're gonna go back over there and spend some more time uh, looking at that series. Another thing to note that this little house here was a groundkeeper house. So this is where Henry Shaw's groundkeepers would live. 
but I think now they're just used for offices. And this big Bruker building here, not the one I thought way over there, that was uh, the Tower Grove house. This one is the Botanical Museum and Library, named after Henry Shaw, founded by him in 1859. So that's right next to the Tower Grove house. I don't think that's open either. Built onto the library and museum, we have the Stephen and Peter Sachs Museum. And there's a little placard here about it, or about the, the brothers, I guess. But if you do find yourself over here and you need to use the restroom or find some, some water or something to drink, uh, they've got restrooms, water fountains, vending machines, all inside here. Let me zoom out on that a little bit. But yeah, the Sachs Museum. Now attached to the library and botany or botanical museum. Now let's go check out those horses. So literally directly across from the other one is this sign right here. I just walked right by it and didn't see it earlier. So we're back. These are called painted ponies. As you can see, they've been painted and they're ponies. So, yeah. Origami on its own sounds really complicated. Then trying to make things out of aluminum, like giant sheets of aluminum and folding it to make these sculptures. That just sounds even more like mind-boggling but they're cool making our way from 16 to 17 we're gonna start heading back towards the front of the park the garden so we're gonna just mosey on over that way and like i said there are bathrooms over here but if you have a map they're also labeled on the map so don't go like me and just walk around blind not knowing where to go. I thought I knew where to go, but obviously not. I got turned around multiple times. They also have these signs out everywhere, so don't walk by signs. Don't ignore things. Don't get lost. Passing by the, what is called the Herring House, or the Groundskeeper's House. Again, they've got a little placard here. Some information about it. Again, to emphasize on the how close everything actually is in the gardens here we were just literally right here we're still right here we haven't gone anywhere and you can already see the next statue so with that being said if you're worried about walking around uh, trying to find all of these they're all relatively close just again pay attention to the map don't overlook things like me that'll make your trip a lot easier so again here we are at statue number 17 light boat being held up by the oars again I said it earlier but the artist behind these is exceptional these are some of the coolest statues I've actually ever seen that looks a little worrisome though that boat does not look ocean worthy. Which is probably why it's up on stilts or oars. Whatever. But still, really cool statues. Again, making our way back down towards the last statue of the series. And here we have it statue number 18. Close the description of this sculpture is actually really cool. It says Story of a piece of paper driven with flying. And as you can see, it starts off as a single sheet of paper and just slowly transcends into a paper airplane and takes off. So again, this, this artist is really cool. Making our way from Folding Plains. I think this was, yep, Folding Plains. That's where we came in. And we're gonna go head over here. There's nothing over here, but I, this is one of my favorite areas of the garden. Can't remember what it's called, but there's a sign up that says so. We'll check that out. It's called the Ottoman Garden. And again, it's one of my favorite spots in the Botanical Gardens. There's usually water 
uh, fountain going on over here in the middle. And it's just one of the more serene areas, in my opinion, of the gardens. And usually you don't have the lawnmowers and traffic whizzing by and everything like that, so it's usually fairly quiet. I've got some giant uh, red cedars just kind of growing, making these nice little walkways. And again, that fountain is usually going, it's usually full, and you have the nice sound of trickling water and everything, so. We do have an exit over here. We can go outside the exit if we want, or I think we're gonna hang out for a little bit. Just kind of see some more things that uh, we kind of grazed over earlier. Another cool thing about this garden is that it has its own throne, so whenever I'm in here, I like to pretend I'm the king of the gardens. Just kind of sit in the, in the throne and watch out over all of the gardens and everything like that. King of the Gardens. Headed out of the Botanical Gardens now. Here's a little miniature of what that visitor center is going to look like. I think right now we're all the way over on this left side here. And usually this is going to be the main entrance. You're going to walk through and just be able to go throughout the gardens like that. Here we have some more of the sculptures in the garden and how many poles it actually took to make these sculptures. And over here, we didn't obviously know this as we were coming in, but this is the first sculpture. As you can see, it's just a, a normal looking crane. Not sure where they have sculpture number two. I don't know if that's back inside or outside, but I didn't find it. So, but yeah, uh, 17 out of 18 sculptures is pretty cool, pretty good. So, with that, we're gonna head back to the car, and I think we're gonna call it a day. You guys, that was our day today at the Botanical Gardens. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. As always, hit that like button. If you want to follow along for more videos, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I just kind of wanted to, at this point, uh, show you a little bit about the map and some of the overall aspects of the gardens. As you can see, it is pretty large. Um, and there are quite a few different things to see in the gardens. Uh, we didn't really uh, show much or like talk about much about all the different gardens and everything, but there are quite a few, many different things in here that you can kind of see. Uh, mainly, we just kind of... Um, saw a lot of the uh, the climatron but then also kind of wherever all of the the sculptures were which is, was pretty much just following the tram route you just follow the tram route around uh, which is that dotted line and that's where all of the all of the sculptures were uh, pretty much in the park um, so yeah it was it was everything was really close together uh, very tight-knit um, so if again if I said this earlier in the video but if you're worried about walking uh, in the park or throughout the park uh, there's plenty of seating options everything is really close together uh, the park itself isn't that big so yeah all in all it was a really great day i enjoyed it i had this is always one of my favorite places to come to uh, in the early spring mid spring late spring summer uh, whatever uh, warm weather months there are in st louis with how unpredictable the weather can be it kind of looked like it was going to rain all day but it held out. It sprinkled a little bit earlier when I first got here, but it held out for the most part. Uh, so, yeah. Again, all in all, great day here at the Botanical Garden. So, with that, we are out. Have a great day.